G'day legends, um, Aaron here from As Ventures Australia. So today I'm out here in sunny, freezing cold Edgeworth. This is this little spot, um, there's a whole bunch of tracks around near my house. Um, people come out here and just bash around just off the side of the road. So I thought I'd come out here and do a video. Lately I've had a lot of questions about my car, the stuff I use and, and why I use it. Yeah, I thought I'd do a video on my whole car um, and why, why I chose the Ford Ranger over any other brand and, and why I've done my mods. So let's get into it. So just a quick background. I'm a chippy by trade and um, I tow a big trailer for work. The reason I have chosen the Ford Ranger over any other brand is um, when I was looking looking at them, um, Ranger's got the 3.2 litre engine, so I knew I'd straight out of the box I'd be able to tow all day with it. That's the main reason that I've chosen this car. Also, probably one of the biggest reasons as well with this car is for me personally, I, I sat in all the other brands and this for me was the most comfortable car just purely to sit in. Um, that was a big thing for me as well, doing a lot of Ks driving every day. So let's get into all the mods that I've done. So we'll start at the front here. I opted, I went and looked at all the brands. I opted for the TJM gear. Um, I think it looks sick, big 63 mil tubing. This is a T13 Outback steel bar, winch bar. So this, this bar is the only one on the market that comes with rated recovery points all built into it, winch rated, all that sort of shit. And yeah, it looks cool. I've gone with the side steps and rails. For me personally, if you've watched any of my other videos, this, this car's taken a bit of a beating. If you're going to do just some normal touring and and some some mediocre tracks here and there, they, these side side bars and steps are gonna be plenty. Yeah, for what I do, I do a lot of rock crawling, a very technical four wheel drive track. The, these things just are not holding up to what I put them through. So soon I'll be getting some um, rock sliders. Also on the front here, I'm running a um, VRS 95,000 pound winch with synthetic rope. This thing is an absolute beast. I've done double pulls, bloody, I've, I've hooked up to a tree and then had to winch my mate Chris O out of Big Hill. Um, it felt like the truck was stretching, but yeah, it's it's taken a beat in this, this um, winch. So I'd highly recommend, um, yeah, the VRS winch as a whole, you know, you can always rely on it. Another thing that I'm currently also doing at the moment is um, I've got all the bash plates. Um, I've only got two of the TJM bash plates um, for the whole bottom under underbody, um, but I've had to modify one um, because I've done a diff drop. So that's currently sitting on the garage floor at home, ready to be put on as well with the um, transmission guard as well. So they'll they'll be put on. But yeah, the tra transfer guard I think is on. One of them's on. Yeah, at the, at the back of um, also stuck with with the whole theme and gone the um, the TJM rear step. Um, it's copped the hiding. This thing's sweet as. Um, also got the tow hitch in there and yeah, pretty simple, pretty easy. Just good good if you need to get up onto the, um, the roof rack and and whatnot. But yeah, this is just what I've gone just to keep with the whole theme. Guess we'll get into the suspension next. Um, what I've done, I, I originally, when I did the car up, I had um, the TJM XGS 4000, just a two inch lift with um, 300 kilo constants in the back. Um, that was sick. I got some 20, I got 20 mil collar spaces put in as well. I give it a bit, li bit more lift, but um, now I've, I've got a few mates that all run the same setup as me as well. Um, I kind of copied them, but um, I'm running Blackhawk upper control arms just to fix that um, wheel alignment and make it all that sort of shit to make it easier to wheel align. Um, then I'm running the Fox 2.0 suspension. Um, just 
pretty standard Fox suspension, but this thing rides like a dream. It's probably one of the lately it's one of my favourite mods that I've done to this car. I put it in all myself. There's a there's a video down below somewhere. Um, you can watch it. Me putting in. I've done. The, I've set it to three inches with um, a 10 mil. Um, strut spacer up the top just to give it a bit more down travel. So yeah, this I can highly recommend it. This is one of the best Suspension setups you can probably put put in your um your Ranger or, or any other dual cab ute these days um, If if you're after it, it is a little bit more expensive, but um, If you do it right the first time you're not putting the second set of suspension in later once you hate it um, and also these things are, are pretty like you can revalve them and get them to suit your car and and you can um, service them as well so they'll last forever if you look after them. Now we'll get on to the rubber. I'm running 315-75-16s um, on a steel 16x8 um, Sunraiser dynamic Wilco Sunraiser rim. These things are sick, I love them. They look cool, you beat them up, you can bend them back into shape if you get into trouble. I, I used to run 285, 75, 16s, the 33 inch, just in the all aggressive all-terrain on the ATZ P3s. <coughs> but um, I've switched over to the, the Baja MTZ P3s and um, yeah, I haven't looked back. Yes, they are loud, most muddies are. I don't really care about the noise, whatever. My, my whole car just makes a lot of noise in general um, with the roof racks and bar work and all that sort of stuff. So for me, it's not a big deal um, with noise. I just turn the radio up. Yeah, if you're looking for a pretty sweet tire, very aggressive, great in the mud, awesome on road. I haven't had any times where I've felt unsafe using these tyres, um, they've grippy as on the road in the wet. When we're doing a slow technical rock crawling tracks, yeah these things just bite in and pull me up. So very happy with them. Still being on the 33s as well, like th those all terrains that I had were, were sick as well. So you know if I had to, if I was only limited to 33s I'd, I'd be happy to use them but I just wanted a bit of extra ground clearance and went for the 35s, um, yeah, in the Mickeys, so very happy with them. All right, next up, I'll get on to um, all the, probably lights and lights and comms. On the front here, I am got a bit cheap. When I was setting this whole car up, I was looking at cheaper options for LED lights and spotties and that, and I didn't really want to spend the big price tags when, like on a set of lights that when, when I was looking because I was already spending a whole heap of money and it was a bit crazy, you know. So um, I got online and bought some eBay specials for two or three hundred bucks for my spotties and they've been sick but I'll probably probably update them sometime soon. They're still doing their job sweet but and then on on the sides here got a cup got um on both sides I've got two 10 inch LED like rue lights so these things just shine out to the side and fill anything fill any gaps in out on the side of the roads and the country roads um you can see animals like coming from a mile away i've been able to slow down and, and avoid any accidents with any kangaroos or goats and cows or whatever if you've got um yeah bar like this that can can take some some led lights on the side like this or I would 100% recommend them. Yeah, any car that I have from now on, I'll definitely be putting this sort of similar setup, probably something a bit bigger even, because there's heaps of space here. Yeah, then up top, I've got a 42 inch light bar. Pretty good for when you're out in the bush, just driving behind someone and slowly, or because these things are like really bright, so you don't really necessarily need that much light when you're just on a real tight track. So that kind of just floods it a bit better and makes it easier to see. Um, being up there on the rack, I don't find that there's any glare on on the bonnet, like a lot of people say. Um, more so just on the on the tip of the UHF aerial, but that's about it. And then on the back, I've also got a 42-inch four-wheel drive Supercenter Special um, facing 
to the rear. Um, I use that or in the bush at night, just reverse and up. It's pretty handy. Um, yeah, if you've got to recover someone at night. So yeah, it's recommend one of those too. We'll move on to my UHF. I'm running a 2.1 dB um, antenna, stubby antenna, GME one. Just looks cool when, when the boys at TJM Hunter Valley did the car up for me. They, I don't know, I didn't really know too much about it, so I just got them to slap that on there because uh, it looks cool. So that's why I did that. And then I've got a Uniden 80 channel um, UHF, which is sick. I've never had any problems with it. Yeah, recommend getting getting yourself a decent UHF for sure because it makes a difference. I'm clear, most people are clear. It's only when um, someone's got a cheaper one or an older one that you can't really tell what they're saying and it's, it just makes it difficult out on the tracks. It's worth the money um, on, a, on a decent UHF. So for this, engine bay section I'll um I'll just hold the the camera because me I'm a tight ass sometimes and I bought a small little cheap ass um stand that doesn't go high enough to look into the engine bay but with this car basically I've got I've got the TJM snorkel which is sick and then I've got a aftermarket KN air filter which I clean regularly and oil it up it's really good you don't really notice much difference with a factory one or an aftermarket one. Yeah, it just sucks a bit harder, that's about it. You can hear it gurgle a bit more in the snorkel. I've got a diesel, a oh, fuel master um, second fuel filter, which is highly recommended. Put one on from, from new when you buy one of these cars because there's a lot of bad fuel out there. And, and that $500 that you spend on that um, second secondary fuel filter could save you a lot of money in the long run you know especially if your car's out of warranty yeah i'd highly recommend one of those and then in here just here this thing i've got a um a provent oil catch can that's another longevity kind of option as well that that can help you in the long run stops a lot of oil and you just it's got a um, valve at the bottom on a hose and you just undo it and let out all the the fine oil mist that comes through your engine so it's not circulating back through your engine another mod that i've done in the engine bay or with part of the engine is um a three inch exhaust i've got a red back four by four exhaust on at the moment it's been pretty good i just had it as a full straight through but it was real airy so um i, ch I put the resonator in and it gives it a bit deeper chunkier note takes a bit of the air out and just sounds sounds pretty good Really, there's no power gains or anything that's noticeable or makes it really good. The only thing you notice is your, um, your EGT temps will come down a bit because it's just pushing the gases out a bit quicker. But other than that, that's, that's about it really. Alright, next um, we'll move to the roof rack setup that I've got. This is one of the things I get asked a lot about because it looks like I've got one whole rack going over the canopy or the canopy and the cab but in actual fact it's actually two separate racks with nice gap in between because the cab's rubber mounted and everything moves so you need to have that flex between the two um, so nothing cracks. Over the, over the canopy I'm running a Rhino rack tradie platform it's good but to mount my rooftop tent I um, had to cut off the rails just to make it work as a quick solution when I wanted to put that on. So yeah, that's what I've done with that. And it also um, holds my, the Rhino rack also holds my um, Foxwing awning that's on, on the opposite side to what I'm on now. Over the cab here, I've got the front runner platform with the table kit. This thing's sick. Um, yeah, that just slides in now. That's always, always with me um, i use it a lot camping at work just whenever you know it's it's stainless steel it's always up there the table for me is one of those bulky items that it's hard to take with you camping um, it's very hard to store so when i saw one of these racks on one of my mates cars i, I was onto it straight away went and priced one up and then got it got it 
really quickly and, and installed it myself. It, it took me um, five beers in the dark to put it on. It's just a bunch of rib nuts holding it on, some sticker flex to make sure it doesn't doesn't leak. But um, yeah, houses. Um, my Max tracks up here that I've I've made a little couple of bolt racks for it, and um, my light. And then on the other side, I got the shovel and I put firewood, swags, just whatever. I also get asked a lot, um, which do I prefer, the front runner or or the rhino rack? And hands down for me, I'm always gonna say the front runner. The rhino rack's good. I had it originally as just the first one. It was good, but it, it started to rattle apart. I lost, I lost nuts and bolts on it pretty quickly. Um, I don't think the, the construction is that great on it. It's not, it's got plastic corners. It's not held together with, with the right bolts. And the slats run front to back. Um, and I don't think, and they're real wide. So I don't, for me, I don't feel like I've got as many options as what I can have on the, on the front runner. The front runner rack is held together with M8 nylon bolts and nuts. This thing is solid as all metal. It's, yeah, oh, hands down front runner. Um, if you, they are more expensive. I think this kit is like 1600 bucks or something, but it is well worth the money. Um, I'm always standing up there taking photos and checking shit out, you know. Yeah, highly recommend it. All right, let's move on to the back. Up top, I'm running a Darchi Intrepidor rooftop tent um, bought off me mate Jordan. Nice and cheap, that's why I've got it. Yeah, I usually was running a swag. Um, I love my swag, but this thing's even better. It's heaps warmer than the swag. Um, you wouldn't think so being up top, but yeah, since I've used it a few times now, and um, yeah, really love it. Bit of a pain in the ass, I can't get into any shops though. Um, you take it on and off, it's it's not too bad, or you just leave it on. Let's get into the back, eh? Hey? All right, so in the back here, I'm, um, yeah, I'm not that happy about it, but um, I'm gonna change it soon. I've got the four-wheel drive Supercenter Titan drawers. You might have seen me on <laughs> the four-wheel drive action YouTube videos and that. But um, yeah, they're, they're 500 bucks and they're what you expect for 500 bucks as opposed to say the MSA ones or um, the custom RV creations, I think they are, like, which are like three grand or something. These are, they're pretty, so they're pretty solid. Um, they are what they are. Um, they, work, they work well for me at the moment, the way I've set it up. So I've, I've pushed this all the way back to the back of the, the tub there. Uh, when I go traveling or into the bush, I'll chuck 20 litres of water in the side there and I chuck my um, some firewood if I need to, uh, just whatever, tubs or random shit, um, chainsaw and fuel and that. Yeah, and then I've just got a, a fridge that I've flogged off um, one of my mates because he's overseas at the moment, 50, 50 litre ARB fridge, works pretty good. So at the side here, I've got um, my little 12 volt system that I have made up myself and it looks like I've made it myself. Um, I just made this little box here because it, it's pretty handy just to, to house the battery in and um, I've made a little drawer, I'll show you that in a minute, um, that houses my compressor stuff and a hatchet and, and my rattle gun and that. But yeah, this is just a switch. I've got lights and, and everything on here, some fuses, um, I've got an Anderson plug for um, solar, so I plug a solar mat in when I need to. Um, I usually use that a fair bit for work if I don't travel very far to work, just to keep the fridge running, keep the beers cold. Then up the back there, I don't know if you can see it, up the back there, I'm, I'm running the, the um, four-wheel drive Supercenter Thumper Max for 120 bucks or whatever it is. This thing, this is actually my second one. They are what they are, um, but for 120 bucks, it pumps up a set of 35s quicker than most of the other other brands. As as far as I can see, I've been 
around a bunch of mates that all got different types of compressors and and I reckon these ones are probably one of the faster ones yeah I've got it hard wired in to my 12 volt system so it's ready to go I even pumped um, one of the electricians tires up the other day at work so it's pretty handy I've helped people out helped myself out um, yes e ease of access and I don't have to set it up so it's I just plug on the hose and and flick a switch and it's good to go but yeah I just got a little box up here as well but yeah this this seems to work out as pretty good I've had to put in a, a pad bolt here just to stop the fridge from sliding out but yeah I chuck um chuck my um, recovery gear in here it's easy access and you know, I just got always got some stuff in in the back here just kind of set it up coffee and whatnot for on site and out in the bush yeah let's move on All right, in the front front seat. So um, in here, it's all pretty standard. I just got some MSA seat covers, uni down 80 channel, like I mentioned before. I've got a scan gauge too, which is just mounted on top of my steering column here. Just watching all my temperatures and you can set it to whatever you want, but I watch um, my volts, my um, coolant temp, a couple of other things. Can't think of them right now but then over here i've also got a boost gauge and exhaust temperature um just to monitor those two because probably exhaust temperature is probably your biggest one to watch that that and your coolant temp um yeah in one of these cars also i'm running a light force um switch fascia panel down here um that you can buy that's just got all my switches for, for my front locker um and lights and everything yeah, another big thing I should mention is of this is twin locked. It's got the rear factory locker, and then I've also put in the front a Harrop E locker. If you're thinking about putting a front locker in your Ford Ranger, definitely do it. It's probably the best mod that you can do to a Ford Ranger. The factory rear locker is really good. It pushes this car through a lot yeah but once you get a twin locked car it changes the whole way you drive a track i love it i use it all the time i'm not afraid to use it i've put a diff drop in in the front to correct my cv angle so there's a bit less load on them when i'm i'm hitting those technical tracks do it it's so sick being able to just cruise through those tracks and and really enjoy enjoy the car for what it what it is um this car surprises me every time i drive it i love it here we are in the back i've ripped out my back seats great idea um i put it online and everyone said ah, oh, it's illegal i don't, um you can't do it this is literally a temporary fix it's held in with one of the seat bolts and um, I just made up this box. I've made it to suit two, just two, two black tubs from Bunnings. And, and for me personally, this thing is awesome. It's, it's like quadrupled my storage space, heaps of room on top. My dog still fits in here. Um, yeah, one tub on this side, one tub on that side. I usually have them in. One, when we go camping, I'll put food in one and, and pots and pans or whatever, bulky stuff. Just random stuff that we take. If, if you're thinking about doing it, just do it. It's, it's pretty good. I reckon it's handy as. Just put some carpet on top. It's pretty sturdy. It's taking a beating. Um, then I've just got some four-wheel drive Supercenter seat organisers on the back of the seats there. Just usually house it like got a few bits and pieces hose connections tap tap connections if you need some water from somewhere that doesn't have a, a handle on it um uh, yeah you got your tire deflators and i've got light and a little first aid kit and everything down there um also on the front of this i've got an eperb why why not um you never know what what happens if you roll your car and that's the only thing you can reach to get you out of trouble or you come across somebody that's rolled and seriously in danger, um, seriously hurt themselves. So my mum bought me an EPIRB for Christmas before I went down the high country. So that's always in there. It's in a nice, easy location. So 
yeah. Then just behind here, I can um, I store all my tent poles and I've got a machete in here just mounted to the back there in case I need to quickly access it. So yeah, that's the inside at the back. Oh, so just um, before I end, end the video, I've had a few people ask me um, what, what problems I've had with, with my car. You know, you always read about the bad things on, on the forums and on the Facebook pages and the internet and people only ever tell you about the bad things. The bad things that I've had and the problems that I've had with, with this car is I was driving around the freeway and I had the idle pulley bearing collapse. I don't know why, it just did. Ford replaced it under warranty straight away, which was sweet, it was a couple of days. That's one problem. Um, another problem I've had with it is oh, I lost the back brakes. Um, the back brakes got contaminated due to mud getting into, into it and I lost the back brakes, had to clamp it. Um, that also got replaced under warranty, no big deal. A um, couple of days without the car, it was over Christmas, so I wasn't really using it too much. It does have a rear, leaking main seal at the moment and that is by the time this video comes out um, it will have been fixed under warranty that is it I had a problem with my rear um, with reverse gear going into reverse straight away but that was due to a bent bracket purely from forward driving without without the right bash plates underneath um, they bent it back into place haven't had a drama since other than those what three things um, I honestly love this car. I have toyed with the ideas of getting on the 79 bandwagon and doing one up. It's 120 grand straight away just to make it okay. Um, I've, I've also been looking into buying another Ford Ranger, but then the new ones have got the DPF. This model of mine is the last of the pre-DPFs, which from what I can see on the forums and everything, this is probably the best model that they've made pre-DPF um, with the least amount of problems, I guess you could say. But I, the things that I've had, I, I wouldn't really call them problems. This shit happens, who, whatever, um, it got fixed. That's all that matters is, did they cover the warranty? Yes, they did. That's all that matters to me. Um, I'm not, not one to go around just bagging them out just for that. But um, for me, 100%, um, if you were looking at buying a Ford Ranger, I'm not, I would go to Cessnock Ford again. Great service, great service department, always always willing to help. Brad and Justin out there, legends. But um, just giving them a shout out because that's who I bought it off and, and I go see them regularly, um, have a chat and they keep me up to date with the new Rangers. So maybe I might buy another, another Ranger and I'll do it up pretty much the same as this. The only thing that I will say is um, if you're thinking about getting a, a, tray, a tray and canopy set up or a tub and canopy set up, I am going to swap over to a, a tray and jack off canopy set up. Um, this setup looks cool but it, it really isn't practical. You can't reach in all the way. If you want something at the back, you've got to jump into it. That's probably for me, that's probably my biggest annoyance on the car. So I'm gonna yeah, change that to a full jack off canopy. Yeah, but other than that, this this car, every time I go out and hit a, a new track or even track that I do, I've done heaps of times, it puts a smile on my face. I really enjoy it. That That's all it comes down to, um, per, personal preference. I'd still choose one of these over any of the other brands. But yeah, that this is why I've chosen the Ranger in particular, yes, black was probably a bad idea, but still looks cool. You can see all the scratches. Um, got a big dent in the door as well as from C CTP 80 um, a while back where I took these off to bend them back into shape. But it's my own fault, so whatever. It's only a dent, it's not killing the car. I hope you like the video and um, yeah, give us a give us a thumbs up because it makes a big difference and, and subscribe if you haven't already because I've got heaps more videos coming out. And, and leave comments in, in like down below because I, I want your feedback and, and I want to make these videos better and if you want to see something just leave me a comment or get on Instagram or Facebook and, and hit me up and, and tell me what you want to see. We've got heaps of videos coming up, um, 
just need more time and yeah thanks guys thanks for watching